This is a T2000 Pro. It is a TPMS service tool, and essentially what this guy can do is read and, um, all the different TPMS sensors and trigger them. Um, it can plug into your OBD2 port and learn what sensors you're supposed to have on the car tires, um, change the positions of the tires, all that type of stuff. It also will program T10 sensors basically which are universal sensors. Um, so you can basically clone one of your existing sensors, replace it with a T10, and this tool will let you do that. So I was sent this to review for free. Um, it normally costs $250 if you wanted to buy one yourself. So they haven't paid me for my review, and my opinions remain my own. All right, so inside the container here, we have the OBD2 cable that will plug this into your OBD2 port. We also have a USB A to C cable which is the charging cable and we have the main unit itself. So it has a USB port there. It also has this cable connection port for connecting that guy. This guy will do some things radio frequency wireless just up against the TPMS sensors but there's other functions that you need to have your car running and have this hooked up to OBD2 port to work with. Um, it also has a little card, and in here it has a manual. All right, so this guy can reprogram the Foxwell T10 um, sensors. So you can clone a sensor from an original sensor and program it into a T10 sensor. But it also has other features just for reading all of the other sensors, the TPMS sensors. It even has an extra feature down here. So this little extra feature, the key and RF tester, is kind of interesting. Um, essentially, you can just take a key fob and push a button on the key fob, and it'll say, hey, I detected this signal. Now, it doesn't say necessarily that the signal was correct or it's working with the car, but it just means, hey, I got a signal here. Um, and so you can test each of the buttons and check and make sure they're working just to make sure the battery on the thing is working. So that's you know a little added feature that's not TPMS related. So the interface is pretty simple, you know, you left, right, up, down, there's yes to go into things, no to stay out of them. Um, and so if you just want to read the TPMS data, you just have to pick your car type. So for example, I'm going to go and set this up for my Nissan. Um, so I go to Nissan, and you can either enter the VIN number and it'll do it automatically, or you can say manually select. And so I have a Nissan Leaf, and so I have to scroll down to L's. And when you go into the LEAF, there's actually several options. Um, there's the 2010 to 2012, there's the 2013 to 2019, which is what I have. Then there's 2015 to 2019, that's a 433. There's 2020 to 2024, which is 433. So this guy works with both 315 and 443 megahertz sensors. So I've selected my LEAF. And then it basically says, go out to your car and you can do all of these different things. So the sensor activate is how you activate the sensor and get a reading from it with Without the car moving. Um, so do you, it has existing data because I've done this once before and so if you want to delete your existing data you can just say F3 for delete it. And it just says hey go out to your car hold this next to the valve stem and hit the trigger the you know, kind of Wi-Fi looking button um, next to this wheel. So let's go do that we'll read all four wheels. All right, so outside, um, I can read this screen even in the sunlight, so the screen's pretty good here. We're just going to hold it up next to the um, valve stem, hit the activate button, and then this guy will start to read, and it takes a couple of seconds. Then it beeps and it says, hey, this tire, it has an ID number, it has the pressure, it's 51 PSI. If this particular sensor doesn't have a temperature. Um, sensor in it so it doesn't have a temperature one and it basically puts a little dot around the next wheel so we're going over the passenger side front wheel it's there now this tire here is down to 41 psi so this guy's 10 psi lower than the other one All right, so just by walking around the car and beeping each sensor, you get the sensor ID, that's the number on the top. You also get the tire pressure. So I noticed, hey, my front passenger tire is 10 PSI lower than all the others, so I should probably raise it up a little bit. So it's a lot easier than taking all the valve stems off if you just want to go out and check your tire pressures. Now, what if you need to replace a faulty or broken TPMS and you don't know what the code is? You can't activate it because it's not working. That's where this OBD2 connector comes in. Just screw it in the bottom here and you plug this into your vehicle and then there's a procedure to learn what 
um, TPMS codes the vehicle is expecting. All right, so we just go down under the dash and plug this guy in to that connector right there. All right, so I'm going to go down to latest tests. And um, the top here is this Nissan Leaf, so I'm going to hit enter there. And it loads the data, and it is getting data from the car here. So I can activate sensors and so forth, but there's also this TPMS diagnose. Um, and so it is loading data from the car. And it takes a little while to do this. All right, so now it has this. You can look at the sensor IDs, and the vehicle has, you know, the activation ID and the current position. Um, and if you look through these, you can see that, hey, my D1 is actually over there. Um, my D7 is actually over there. Um, and the D3 is off over here. So essentially, because the tires have been rotated, they're no longer, except for the front right tire, they're no longer in the original factory position. You can also read the codes, and in this case, I have low pressure front left, front right codes um, that have been saved here in the past. I'm going to go ahead and hit the clear codes button here, and this will clear the diagnostic trouble codes and the freeze data. Um, and that's mostly about TPMS errors, but it, so now if I go back up and read the codes, the um, there's no TPMS codes in the system. Now there's this OBD relearn, and it says, hey, here's the front left, front right, rear, rear, and the codes, and you can press um, F1 for OK. And it says, OBD relearn, please wait. says okay I'm done and so now the um, cars um, position for each of these tires is now correct now on my particular car I don't have any information about which tire is low I just get a low tire pressure warning so you don't really need to keep these correct for my car um, but it is kind of nice so that if it says oh the front left tire you know it actually is the front left tire and there's also some sensor information here so you can look at the OEM sensor info well it was supplied by Continental which makes sense because Continental made the original OEM tires on here and they haven't been updated and it tells you, you know, the frequency, and there's some serial numbers and part numbers, and it even tells you, hey, what wheel nut torque should it be set to? Um, and then you can do the relearn if you need to. All right, so under this menu, the things like the TPMS diagnose and programming and learning, all of that needs to be program you need to be plugged into the car so if you have this um, obd2 cable disconnected those features won't work. talk wirelessly to your tpms sensors but it needs to have that obd2 connector connected to your car for these things to work and then it loads data off of the obd2 can bus so if you want to monitor live data you can go into this live data thing here and as far as i can tell you can only pick two tires to monitor because if i i pick two and then i go down to a third i select it it deselects the other one and you can basically hit f2 to graph it and it basically just shows you a graph of your tire pressures. All right, I know the cable's plugged in correctly to the OBD2 sensor for the TPMS functionality. When I go over to the OBD engine thing here, um, I have not had it work correctly. So we'll see if this is going to work here. It says auto scan and protocols. Um, so if you go to protocols, there's you know CAN bus and there's a whole bunch of others. So typically you use CAN bus. Um, and every time I've tried this, it basically just says, oh, it's failed, it's not working, so OBD2 isn't working for me. It might be that this tool is simply limited to do TPMS and they just have some extra stuff here because it says verif you know, fail to connect. So um, I can't really evaluate anything inside of that OBD2 menu, but everything in the TPMS menu is working really well. This little original equipment thing here is really just a way to look up data. So you can basically say, hey, I'm going to go into a vehicle model and I can say Buick, you know, certain this, that, or the other, and it'll tell you, oh, that's a 315 chip, and you know, it'll give you some information about it. So it's really just kind of a, a data research tool. Now, in the latest tests, there's my Nissan LEAF, and then there's several other vehicles, Chrysler's and a Buick Enclave in here. Um, so I'm not sure if those might have been test data left over from the factory or something else. You can just hit F1 to delete. Um, you know, you can pick any of these that you don't want to remember anymore um, and delete them. 
So keeping your vehicle in here in the list is kind of nice because instead of having to go through the menus and reactivate that, um, you can just click that vehicle and it will set everything up and, and work with that vehicle. Um, we don't want to do it. When you're activating the sensor and reading these, you don't have to do it in order. You can just move with the arrow keys to the specific wheel you want to check. So I can go over to this wheel that was low and trigger that to read that one. All right, we are going to reactivate this wheel here. And oh, now we're up at the right PSI. Okay, so we have one bar missing on the battery. I'm just gonna plug it in, see what the charging is like. So I've plugged this into a USB-C power delivery charger and it is not negotiating USB-C power delivery. So you can't just charge it with any old phone charger. You really need to use like a USB-A to C cable that has a guaranteed five volts. All right, I've plugged this in via a USB A to C cable. Um, it's 5 volts, 1.1 amps, so it's charging at about 5.7 watts. Um, it has a little lightning bolt on the icon there. Um, so basically, pretty much any USB port should be able to provide 5 to 6 watts to charge this guy up. Nice little tool. Uh, it has the bonus key fob. Is it transmitting checker? So on my Nissan Leaf, um, I was able to check the tire pressures without having to unscrew anything, so that's a nice feature. Um, I was able to set up the car and the TPMS sensors so that, you know, which sensors on the left front matches correctly, so that's a nice thing to be able to do on your own, assuming your shop that rotates your tires doesn't take care of that for you correctly. Um, but on my Leaf, everything's working, so there's, you know, limited utility here. It's basically just looking at things, checking the pressure, you know, maybe changing the position of the sensors. Now, on our 2006 Toyota Prius, we have a TPMS warning light because the tire sensors are so old that a couple of them have ran out of battery. Um, and I'm hoping to be able to diagnose, you know, is it one sensor or is it all the sensors that need replacing? And if so, what were the original sensor codes that I can program into replacement sensors? All right, so this is our 2006 Toyota Prius. Um, and what I've learned is that one of the four TPMS sensors is still working, but it has an extremely low battery. Um, and the other three are not working, most likely because the battery is worn out since 2006. So the fact that um, three of my four tires sensors did not even work, and the fourth tire up there has a super low battery indication, um, because it's a 2006 vehicle, not even certain that this tiny little spare tire has one, but the car indication there says that the spare tire is supposed to have a TPMS sensor in it, um, but it is also not detecting here. Um, this one doesn't look like the other four, so I don't think there's an actual sensor in there, though. All right, let's see what the OBD2 says here. Okay, so this tells us the codes that every sensor is supposed to have. We can see right now that the car thinks the uh, right front tire should be on the right rear, but uh, that's okay. There's no spare tire ID recorded, which is good because a spare tire doesn't look like it has a TPMS. So one of my four sensors was able to be activated by this guy, which isn't surprising given that their 2006 was the in date, in service date there. Um, so basically what this tells me is that if I want the TPMS to be working for this car, so we don't have the uh, tire pressure warning light all the time, I'm gonna need to get four new TPMS sensors and either program them to these codes here or um, you know, reconfigure the car to a different set of codes. But basically it's gonna take a set of four new ones. I mean, one of them's working, but the battery's so low, if you're gonna replace the other three, you might as well replace the fourth one as well. All right, now a lot of the codes say, hey, the transmitter ID is not received, which is the code you kind of expect to have happen in this case. Now I can clear these codes, um, but I don't think it's going to last for very long. So you can see that the TPMS sensor warning light is gone because I cleared the codes. But I think the next time we drive this car, it's gonna say, hey, I'm not hearing from all these sensors, um, and they're gonna come back right back. So the only way to keep that light off permanently is to get some TPMS sensors um, and put them in the wheels. So this is kind of an expensive tool 
to have just as your home garage, unless you're doing a lot of tire changes yourself. You know, you have summer and winter tires on three or four cars, you're flipping back and forth. Um, I could see potentially this having some value for a person like that. But generally, I think most of the time, this is gonna be a tire shop type thing that would, that would be buying this product.